Chapter 4 In the Studio After he graduated college in 1951, Fred moved to New York City, where he applied for a job at NBC. The television network needed an assistant producer to work on several of its music programs, and Fred had a, music in, a degree in music. That was a good fit, and he was hired. Although the job sounded important, at first Fred mostly served coffee and ran errands. He learned how to deal with many different kinds of people. Once, he was yelled at for bringing someone the wrong drink. Fred remembered that feeling. He might never be famous or important, but he would always try to treat people well. Before long, Fred got promoted to the job of floor manager. He worked on several programs, like NBC Opera Theater, The Kate Smith Hour, The Gabby Hayes Show, and Your Hit Parade. As floor manager, Fred's job was to make sure everything ran smoothly. He was in charge of telling the crew, the people who worked behind the scenes, when to change sets. He got the props the actors needed. Sometimes he needed a little help to get the red vase or the green parrot. Fred was colorblind, so he could not tell red from green. He also gave actors their cues to get on or off the stage. He was always looking at the clock because everything was carefully timed. Since the shows aired live, there was no do-overs. Everyone had only one chance to get it right. Of course, that didn't always happen. One time, Kate Smith was singing in front of a set painted to look like a farmhouse. When Fred thought the song was over, he told the crew to raise the set into the rafters over the stage, but he was too early. Kate wasn't finished yet. As the set went up, it looked to the audience like she was sinking lower and lower. Everyone knew that there would be mistakes from time to time, though. Most people laughed about them. Fred also worked with the Western star Gabby Hayes, who had a show for children. Fred loved kids, and the two became friends. Television stars performed for thousands of people, and they couldn't even see them. Fred thought that might be hard. He asked Hayes how he did it. Hayes told him his secret. Freddy, he said, I think of one little buckaroo. He meant that he performed as if there were only one child in the audience. That made sense to Fred. People watching a movie or a play sat in an audience with a lot of other people, but when they watched TV, they did it in their homes. It was much more personal, like the show was playing just for them. Later, when Fred got in front of the camera, he always imagined talking to just one little buckaroo. Gabby Hayes, 1885 to 1969. Before he went into television, George Gabby Hayes was a popular movie actor who appeared in Western films in the 1930s and 1940s. The nickname Gabby came from a character that was created for him, Gabby Whitaker. In Hayes' movies, the star was usually a famous actor like Roy Rogers or John Wayne. Hayes usually played the loyal sidekick who was often cranky but still a good-hearted friend. He was known for his funny expressions such as You're darn tootin' and Jumpin' Jehoshaphat. Fred had made new friends in New York, but he missed Joanne Bird, his friend from college. She was still in Florida. Fred knew he wanted to spend the rest of his life with her. He wrote her a letter asking her to marry him. Joanne was so excited that she called him on the phone and accepted his proposal. They were married in 1952. Fred's career was going great. He was on his way up the ladder. Then, yet again, Fred decided to make a sudden change.